Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at operating leverage. What is operating leverage? It's a measure of how revenue growth translate into operating income. So simply put, if we look at the income statement, we have revenue at the top minus all expenses, cost of goods sold, so on and so forth. And at the bottom, we are going to have a profit or you can call it operating income, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now the question is, how does the change in revenue affect the change of the bottom line in operating income. And this is what the operating leverage is measuring. And simply put, what's going to make the difference is the cost structure. And basically our cost could be fixed cost, could be variable cost, and the fixed cost could take many forms such as interest. For example, interest expense is a fixed cost. Now this, um, this topic is important, whether you are taking an accounting course or the CPA exam, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. You can keep them. I don't replace them. My intent is to be a useful addition to explain the material differently. And by doing so, add 10 to 15 points to your score. How so? If I help you understand your review course better, your review course will help you do better on the CPA exam. I fill those gaps that you have not learned in college, or if you learned it, you did forgot it. What happened is this. Here's my offer simply. One month of subscription. That's your risk with me. Your potential gain is passing the exam. Your maximum risk is one month of subscription. If you like my system, you keep it. I have helped hundreds, if not thousands of candidates pass the exam. If you feel you know that wasn't as good as I wanted, then you can cancel. But if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam and take a look at my accounting and other finance and CPA sections. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Take a look Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. In order to understand the operating leverage on profitability, you need to understand how fixed cost and variable cost as well as mixed cost behave. If you don't know how to what mixed cost, variable cost, or fixed cost behave, please go back and view chapter two, part one, which is I, I, I explained how fixed cost, variable cost, and mixed cost behave. So what is operating leverage? It's a measure, uh, a measure of the extent to which fixed costs are being used in an organization. So basically what you are using, you are using fixed cost as a leverage, okay? Um, what is a leverage? Basically, leverage is using um, something else to help you produce a lot of profit. So you have a lot of lot of leverage or not a lot of leverage. When you have a lot of fixed costs, you might have a lot of leverage, but leverage we're going to see is a double-edged sword. So we're going to see what do I mean by this. So operating leverage is the greatest in companies that have a high proportion of fixed costs. So basically, when you have high fixed costs, you have more operating leverage. So you can make more profit, we're going to see in good years, but in, in, in not, a, not good years, you're going to be making less profit. Okay. So when you have more leverage, you're going to have more profit. Okay. So to illustrate this point, let's go ahead and use an example. So let's take a look at this example. And we're going to start by saying, tickets sold for a company is 2700 the revenues is uh, ticket sold times eighteen dollars. The revenues is forty eight thousand six hundred, and we assume that the f the cost of the band is forty eight thousand. So what's left for gross profit only six hundred dollars. But notice the cost is totally fixed. Now here's what's going to happen. We're going to go from two thousand seven hundred tickets sold, and we're going to increase the tickets only to three. So we're going to increase the tickets by 300 tickets. That's it. And if you're interested in knowing um, what is a 300, uh, 300, uh, 300 over 2700 is. So if we take 300 divided by 2700, so it's an 11.11% 11 .11 increase. So it's, let's say 11%. So what we did is we increased sales by only 11%. So sales increased by. 
So let's see what's going to happen because sales increased by 11%. Well, if sales increased by 11%, we sold 3,000 tickets times $18 per ticket. The total revenue is 54000 Now, our cost for the band is a fixed cost of 48000 So 54000 minus 48000 gross profit is $6,000. That's a huge increase in gross profit. We went from 11%, uh, it's, this is a 10 times when the profit, 10 times, okay? Let's keep on going. If we increase revenue, uh, if we increase the number of tickets sold by 10%, from 3,000 to 3,300, 3,300 tickets times 18, times $18 per ticket, the revenue is 59400 the fixed cost is the same, 48000 now we are at 11400 So by increasing sales, the number of tickets, by only 10%, we increase gross profit by 90%. We increase gross profit by 90, 90. So, why does this happen? Well, this happens because our cost is fixed. We are using leverage. In other words, once we meet the fixed cost, once we reach that hurdle, okay, every extra dollar we sell above the fixed cost is strictly profit. So strictly profit. So if you want to really think about it in another way, here we sold, once we break even, we, uh, um, we haven't used the term break even first, but let's assume when we moved from 2,700 to 3,000 tickets, we sold 300 additional tickets. All the 300 additional tickets times $18, the whole thing was profit, was pure profit. And what is, and what is uh, 3,000 times 18? Let's just get the calculator. If we look at 300 times 18, it's 5,400. The increase is 5,400. And notice, the 5,400, so the increase in sales was 5,400, and the whole thing, the 5,400 went into the profit. So the whole amount that we increased in sales went into the profit. Again, we increased the number of sales by 300 tickets again, from 3,000 to 3,300 times 18. The whole 5,400 went to the profit immediately. Okay? And this is the power of leverage, because you're using your fixed cost as a leverage. You're using the fixed cost as a leverage, as an operating leverage. So every extra dollar that you sell, it goes directly into, it goes directly into, uh, into the profit. So that's, that's the idea of leverage. When, when all costs are fixed, every additional sales contribute to $1 in gross profit. Risk and reward assessment. So what is risk? Risk refers to the profitability that sacrifices may exceed benefit. So this is how what risk is. And risk may be reduced by converting fixed cost into variable cost. So if you have a fixed cost, yes, you have leverage, but you also have risk. The more fixed costs you have, the higher is your risk. And we're going to show you why. So we have to understand this concept. And the more variable cost you have, you have less risk as a company. So let's see what would happen uh, if the band receives $16 per ticket sold instead of a, of, instead of a fixed cost of $48,000. So let's assume the band, uh, if the band would receive $16 per ticket rather than the $48,000 up front. So let's see what happened to their uh, tickets sold. Let's see what happened to their revenue. If they sold... 2,700 tickets, the revenue per ticket is $18, okay, and the cost of the band, we're going to pay the band $16 times 2,700, so the gross profit is 5,400. Now we're going to go from 2,700 to 3,000 tickets. To go to 3,000 tickets, once again, 3,000 times 18 is 5,400, then we have to, the band cost goes up, the cost of the band goes up, remember, because this is a variable cost, 16 times 3,000, which is 48,000, and our profit is 6,000. If we increase the sales ticket by 10%, again, 
our revenue is 3,300 times 18, 59,000. 3,300 times 16, our cost also increases and our revenue increases. But remember, when, when, when it was fixed cost, every time we increase revenues by 10%, the gross profit increase much, much more. So what can we say? Well, a 10% increase in revenues only gave you a 10% increase in gross profit. So shifting the co cost structure from fixed to variable not only reduces risk, but also reduces the potential profit because you only make more profit if you are taking more risks. With variable cost, what's happening is if your cost is variable, you're taking less risk because you don't care if... Uh, if one person show up, a lot, of, a lot of people show up because your cost is variable. I mean, you want more people to show up, but your cost is variable. You don't have that urgency to meet the 48,000. When you had to come up to pay the, uh, the, 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 uh, for the concert, 48,000 as a, as a fixed cost, you were eager to meet that cost. Because if you don't meet that cost, you're going you're gonna to lose money. But in this situation, if you sold one ticket, okay, and uh, one person show up, and it, in other words, if you sold one ticket, 18 minus 16, you make $2 per profit, okay? If you sold two tickets, you're going to make $4, three tickets, $6, so on and so forth. So your revenue would increase by 18, and your expenses will increase by 18. So this is times two, and this is times two. So your, your revenue increases, and your cost also increases. But with a fixed cost, if you sold only one ticket... If you sold only one ticket, you're going to be way, way at a loss here. Okay? So the, the, the shifting your cost to a variable cost, it's going to help you uh, reduce the risk, but it's also your profit will go down as well. Your profit will slow down. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, this three examples side by side. Let's assume the first company has all fixed cost. So all fixed cost means this is a risky company. They sold 10 units. The selling price per unit is $10. They don't have no variable cost because it's a 100% fixed cost company. Sales revenue is $100. Total variable cost is zero. Total fixed cost is 60. And this is a fixed cost. So the profit is $40. Same company would have a combination, a combination company. $10, uh, 10, 10 units sold, $10 per ticket, the variable cost is 30. So this company has both a variable cost and a fixed cost. So the sales revenue is 10 times 10 equal to 100. The variable cost is 10 times 30. 10 times 30. 10 times 3 equal to 30, not time, 10 times 30. And the total fixed cost is $30. So this is a variable, variable um, I'm sorry, a mixed cost scenario. Also the net income is $40. This is all variable cost. We sold 10 units, each unit at $6 at $10. The variable cost per unit is 6. Total revenue is 100. Variable cost is 60. No fixed cost. No fixed cost. And this is the cost is $40. Okay? So now we're going to see what happens when the number of units sold increases. So what, what should happen if, you, if we sell more units? Based on what we know, what should happen? Well, Think about it for a moment. What should happen if we sell more units under each of these scenarios? Who do you think it's going to benefit the most? Well, I hope you know the answer. And all fixed cost companies should benefit the most. Let me show you how mathematically. If we sold 11 units rather than 10, the selling price per unit is 10, so we're going to receive $110. No variable cost. Now we are lucky. We are using the leverage. The leverage here is the fixed cost. We no longer have to pay extra cost because our cost is fixed. So our net income is $50. Same scenario for a, for a company that has a combination of variable and fixed. If they sold 11 tickets, $10 per ticket, revenue is 110 Then the variable cost is 11 times 3, which is $33. The fixed cost is $30 because this is 50-50. And uh, the profit is 47 Notice the profit is lower then if it's 100% fixed. If the company is 100% variable, all their cost is variable, if they sold 11 tickets, $10 per ticket, the revenue is 110. Their, their variable cost is 11 times 6, which is $66. They have no fixed cost, 
and their profit is $44. So notice the company does best if their, fic if their cost is fixed and they increase the number of units sold. Because for a fixed cost company, the goal is to go over the, the hurdle. And the hurdle in this example is $60. Okay. Now, let's assume, on the other hand, they the uh, the they sell one less ticket instead of ten they sold nine tickets so we're going to decrease in comparison to the to the original example well what's going to happen to all the fix all fixed cost company they're going to sell nine units at ten dollars the total revenue is ninety dollars they have no variable cost they have sixty dollar in total fixed cost their profit is thirty let's look at a company that all their cost is variable they're going to sell nine tickets nine at ten dollars total revenue is ninety dollars now we're gonna look at the variable cost nine times six is fifty four and their profit is thirty six dollars so notice the uh, both companies let's go back to the original example original example they both made forty dollars under the original example but now when sales went down when the number of units went down variable cost benefited more because their in income only decreased by four dollars while the all fixed cost company their income is reduced by ten dollars it's a huge decrease in relationship to variable the, the variable profit decrease okay now this is a combination uh, it's going to be obviously in between if we sold nine tickets at ten dollars the total revenue is ninety uh, variable cost is 9 times 3 equal to 27 fixed cost is 30 and the profit is 33 okay so it's better than better than being fixed 100 percent and uh, but less uh, beneficial than being 100 percent variable simply put in bad time when the when the number of unit goes down uh, the variable cost the variable cost is less risky so companies with variable cost structure they're going to be less risky in bad time but during good times um, fixed cost company because you, they're using a leverage uh, they're gonna do much much better because once they exceed the fixed cost every additional dollar they sell will be considered pure profit okay. effect of co cost structure on profit profit stability um, level of fixed cost high earning volatility high so if you have a high fixed cost what's going to happen your, your your earning might go up substantially or they might go down substantially so any small increase or decrease it's going to make a huge profit volat a huge uh, change in your profit so the profit volat volatility going up and down is high therefore you are riskier because I don't know what's going to happen um, however if your fixed cost is low if you don't have a low if you don't if you have a low fixed structure your earning volatility is low because if you sell less you're gonna earn less money if you sell more units you're gonna earn a little bit more not a lot but if you sell less you're gonna earn a little bit less but with a high fixed cost structure your earning will increase and decrease quite substantially which makes you a risky company